Paul Quarterhair is making the claim that the biceps don't benefit from stretch media and hypertrophy. Let's break the evidence on the topic down. There have been three studies comparing shorter to longer muscle length training for the elbow flexors. The first one by Pinto and colleagues didn't find any significant differences, but did find that the results leaned in favor of the longer muscle length group for hypertrophy. The second study by Sato and colleagues found greater distal hypertrophy, or closer to the insertion point of a muscle, when partial repetitions were performed at longer versus shorter muscle lengths. Finally, the most recent study by Pedrosa and colleagues found greater elbow flexor hypertrophy following longer muscle length training versus shorter muscle length training. So out of three direct studies, two found significant benefits to using longer muscle length training for the elbow flexors, and one didn't find any significant differences, but the results were still leaning in favor of the lower muscle length training group seeing greater hypertrophy. Based on this, it's a very uphill argument to make the claim that the elbow flexors don't benefit from stretch immediate hypertrophy. Paul goes on to say that the preacher curl exercise, that's the exercise being used in all three studies I mentioned, doesn't actually place the biceps in a lengthened position. There is some truth to this, but that is only true for the biceps long head because that is the only elbow flexor that actually crosses the shoulder joint. The other elbow flexors, like the brachialis, the brachioradialis, or the short head of the biceps, are getting a nearly maximal stretch in the longer muscle length condition or group in these studies. Additionally, and importantly, even the long head of the biceps is more lengthened in the longer muscle length condition in these studies than it is in the shorter muscle length condition. So ultimately, we are comparing shorter to longer muscle length training and lower muscle length training is better for the elbow flexors in all three studies on this topic. Paul then makes the argument that the differences in hypertrophy in the most recent study by Pedrosa and colleagues is due to leverage differences. There's a few issues with this claim. Fundamentally, it doesn't actually sound like Paul read any of these studies, or he doesn't understand how ultrasounds are done. None of the three studies I discussed only looked at the biceps. Instead, they looked at hypertrophy of several of the elbow flexor muscles at once. That's partly because it's more informative, you don't just care about the biceps, and partly because it's easier to ultrasound, speaking from personal experience. Coming back to Paul's argument, even if differences in bicep leverages may have impacted the results, and maybe there were differences, these studies looked at elbow flexor growth more broadly. More importantly though, the only study that has looked at matching the resistance curve of an exercise to the strength curve of a muscle group, or essentially making sure the exercise is operating at the point where a muscle has its best leverage, as Paul Carter would put it, didn't find any benefit for muscle growth, and this study was performed by Staniszewski and colleagues. Very importantly, and this is in response to common criticism I see bandied around regarding this research, all three studies made sure that participants in both groups trained equally hard and used similar intensities, so that hopefully even any differences in leverages should largely be washed out by this decision. Finally, Paul goes on to say that studies should measure fascicle length changes, not just cross-sectional area changes. And this is because Paul thinks that stretch-mediated hypertrophy occurs only through changes in fascicle length. The issue here is that the evidence really isn't conclusive in this regard, and there are other mechanisms, many of them in fact, that may or may not be at play, and Paul is likely being reductionistic in this case. Putting that issue to the side for a second though, the study Paul is mentioning here did look at cross-sectional area, but the two other ones I mentioned did not. They looked at muscle thickness. In fact, both Pinto and colleagues and Sato and colleagues looked at elbow flexor thickness as opposed to cross-sectional area. So, the argument that we only have studies looking at cross-sectional area and therefore we can tell if the elbow flexors respond to stretch mediated hypertrophy, falls flat on its face, since we also have several studies showing similar effects when measuring muscle thickness instead. To summarize, we have three studies comparing shorter to longer muscle length training in the elbow flexors. All three showed favorable results for longer muscle length training for hypertrophy. The mechanisms at play aren't super clear, so just resorting to saying, oh, but they didn't measure fascicle length adaptations, isn't really strong enough of an argument here, particularly when we have direct evidence looking at hypertrophy over several studies in the muscle group we're talking about. In addition, it simply isn't as easy as just saying, oh, 
fascicle length changes are the only potential mechanism involved in lower muscle length training being beneficial. In fact, there are several other mechanisms that may be at play, and we simply don't have enough evidence yet to make that claim. So until we have further evidence, I would much rather look at the direct evidence on the topic, comparing shorter to longer muscle length training, and seeing which one appears to lead to more hypertrophy, both for each individual muscle group, like the elbow flexors here, we have three studies on these muscles specifically, but also more broadly speaking, if we have evidence in lots of muscle groups, which at this point we do, we have the triceps, we have the quads, we have the biceps, etc. At this point, we can make a generalizable principle about hypertrophy. Longer muscle length training likely is better for hypertrophy, period. And that doesn't really seem to be muscle specific for the time being. Overall, Paul Carter has some good takes on training, but this isn't one of them. We are currently conducting data collection for several studies on range of motion and muscle length and muscle hypertrophy, so definitely stay tuned for those.